What up, world? It's your boy, the nonprofit sector connector. Calm down, kid. Coming at you from the top of my house, just below the roof. Where else? Two flights up from the kitchen, just in case you get lost. I'm in the attic. It's your boy, Tommy D, philanthropy and focus. We're at like, I think we're in the high 80s or uh, or low 90s as far as episodes of the program here. I think we'll top out the year here, uh, 2022, at episode number 99 of philanthropy and focus. What do we focus on here on Philanthropy and Focus? Well, if you know me and you know I'm the Nonprofit Sector Connector, or if you don't know me, let me introduce you. How you doing? I'm Tommy D, <laughs> the Nonprofit Sector Connector. And what do we focus on? We focus on telling stories with nonprofits. We focus on bringing opportunities to share what nonprofits are doing and two things, as I always say, tell their story and amplify their message. And that's become my mission. It's become incredibly important to me to bring on a nonprofit leader each and every Friday morning to have a conversation, have a conversation about the impact that the organization is making, have a conversation about who they serve, how they serve, what do they need. And this, the next two weeks, the, today and next Friday are, are really special in the calendar of Philanthropy and Focus because the two organizations that we're recognizing and speaking with are organizations that I am rather well connected to. Today, my friend Allison LaFalita is here from the Nonprofit Resource Hub. I was part of the founding team and I'm part of the group that really uh, keeps this organization going. And, and I'm involved with a lot of conversations about the growth of the organization. And next week, Allison and my friend Ken Serini will be here from the New York City Imagine Awards and originally the Long Island Imagine Awards, which is itself a nonprofit organization. I serve on both of those committees. So kind of a home game the next couple of weeks. We're, we're, we're home. We're, we're off the road, you know, like in uh, NFL football or, or baseball, I travel around. It's going to be real Long Island focused, New York City focused. So really, Allison, first of all, I have so many things I could read about you. Um, I will read some things, but I always like to start this way. Welcome to the show. And I, you're not really in the attic, but welcome virtually to my attic. What is going on? Good morning. Thank you so much, Tommy, for having me on today. I really appreciate it. Uh, not only are you a dear friend and a colleague, but now you're hosting. So thank you. Fun. It's fun. I welcome you to the show. Welcome to the show. Welcome. I think that's um, I think it's from Shrek. Welcome to our world. Welcome to our, well, it's not, you know, very impromptu. Do I sing here on the show? It's not planned. It just sort of happens that I start singing. So uh, today, apparently it's one of those days where I might sing throughout the show. We'll see how it is. I may have shared with you, Allison, by the way, I, I, I do appreciate your friendship and the work we do together for sure. Um, you know, I may have shared with you. I certainly think I've shared it with people who have listened to the show. I think I am about to take singing lessons because I always wanted to be a crooner. And I think it's about time in my life for me to do that. So who knows? There might be a whole show about me learning how to sing, you know, singing. Right. And maybe that's the name of the album. And we can see you in a tuxedo. You I, could rock a good tuxedo. I, I had one on a couple of weeks ago to be, in fact, I think I'm going to buy my own tuxedo. I apologize to all the people out there who are in the uh, tuxedo business who sell tuxedos or rent tuxedos. But I found this little thing, Jeff Bezos, although the stock is down, I was just talking to my wife earlier today. Um, Jeff Bezos company, Amazon, you may have heard of it, everybody sells tuxedos and you could pick up a tuxedo for a lot. You could pick it up for like half the price of what it costs to rent a tuxedo, but we didn't come here to talk about tuxes, but I met a man a couple of weeks ago, uh, when, uh, uh, post tour processing is a nonprofit friend of ours, uh, Robin Canariato, and she had given me an award one night and there was a man there who goes up and down the East coast doing like acting as Frank Sinatra, singing the whole thing. He's like the the Frank Sinatra now. And I said to him, hey, man, I always wanted to sing. And he goes, look, I, I didn't start doing this till I was like 36 or something. So I'm a little later than that, Allison. But, I, you know, you're not right. by much. Definitely not, not by, by much. much. Not by much. You're right. You know what? You didn't say it, but fine. I'll go to Amazon. I'll buy a tuxedo. We'll get some singing lessons. 
And you know that the it'll be singing in the attic is better than singing in the shower. All right, let's do it. Allison, you have a special background in nonprofit. I try to do this on each program, really get into the groove with the leader, their background, the work they've done, what they've been involved with, and then ultimately we get to talk about the organization. Today is, is as I say, very special because we have such a great relationship, and certainly this will lead into the conversation I'm having with Ken next week. Ken, Ken Serini of Serini Associates, also one of the founding team of the Nonprofit Resource Hub. Allison, I want to learn about what you drew you, what kind of, were there cer certain parts of your life that drew you to the nonprofit sector? And I, I know, you know, what I'll read is, before we do that, obviously I'm mentioning Allison is the executive director of the Nonprofit Resource Hub, but she's also widely recognized for her work in the nonprofit sector, as well as working with associations. Her company is Plum and Copper LLC, which, which is an executive management consulting firm focused on nonprofits and trade organizations. She uh, has been an active community volunteer, very involved in the community in Long Beach, Long Beach Chamber of Commerce, AFPLI, the Association for Fundraising Professionals for Long Island here. So Allison, what drew you to this work initially? Was there some catalyst or experience in your life that you said, you know what, I really like this nonprofit work. I want to be a part of it. Uh, actually, nothing really happened per se. I think that uh, sometimes you're pushed in the direction you're supposed to be in without even realizing it. Uh, initially, I was going into TV production. And uh, a friend of mine, upon graduating college, said to me, well, why don't you go to this uh, association and see if they're looking for a PA? And I went in to the office just on the fly. And in the 90s, you could do that. You could just walk into somebody's office. And I was a very enthusiastic young graduate. And I showed them my VHS reel and was so excited. And they said, well, you know, we're looking for somebody to manage our East Coast chapter. We're a national organization. Do you think you'd want to do that? And I said, sure. And I just kind of fell into being an executive director right out of school. Uh, and it was really interesting and I loved it. Um, I don't think I realized what a great and amazing gift it was at the time uh, because I still had my dreams of being in TV and I kind of went through that. But I always wound up doing fundraisers and events. And I always wound up working with nonprofit organizations. And as you grow and mature, you realize how important it is to make a positive contribution to the world. And for me, this was a really great way to be able to do it, was, is to work with nonprofit organizations to help them manage their businesses. Uh, very often, and, and most often, nonprofits are created out of the goodness of somebody's heart. Uh, but not everybody realizes it is a real business and needs to be run as such. So, you know, did something happen in particular? No. But... You know, as I said, sometimes you are guided to where you need to be. And I believe that's what happened. And, you know, I've been doing this now for 25 years. I've worked with a number of nonprofit organizations. I have met some of the most interesting people through my work. I have had some of the coolest experiences through my work. And I feel like it's really important, especially in today's world where it seems like greed, lying, and bullying is the only way to stay on top that I'm a role model to my children, that that's not the only way to be, and you can be successful by doing good work. Oh, man. Uh, I, it was a great show, everybody, because that's all that we needed to really say. <laughs> so listen, everybody, have, I just you got back 50 minutes. Here. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. But the point, what, what really is striking me and what you're saying there is that that's what this is about. That's why I leave this show with you today. I shoot a quick video for next week's show, and I head out to out east on Long Island to meet with canine companions. They're having a graduation for the dogs today that are companions for people mm -hmm. with disabilities. And, uh, you know... <laughs> This is funny when I say it, but it's pretty fun being Tommy D because you get invited to really cool stuff that other people don't even know about. So Canine Companions happens to be coming on the Professionals and Animal Lovers show uh, on Monday uh, next week. And they asked me if I'd come out to graduation. So I'm going to go see the dogs graduate and then they'll be given to their new friend. So the person that they're going to be supporting. So it's going to be super special. I'll tell you, don't worry, gang. I'll take pictures and video and the whole thing. But I, I say that because, you know, Allison, you talk about being a role model, you know, in a time in history when countries divided, the planet's divided in a lot of ways. And, you know, when I have 
my own children say to me, hey, when are we going to go do a day of service with a nonprofit? I kind of chuckle because like, that's an idea that like I came up with probably just sitting on the couch one day. I was like, ah, I should go do some days of service. And now that's like a thing to the point where I'm sure he's checking in. I haven't checked Facebook yet, but my buddy Mick Collins, you know, he told me, you know, Tommy D, I did a day of service outside of Gaithersburg, Maryland, because you're out there doing this stuff. And that's it, man. It's a ripple effect. It's, you know, and I, and I know I'm always very careful because I, I feel like it sounds like a bit egotistical or self-serving, but I, I don't, I'm only saying this stuff because I think it inspires other people to, to do cool stuff. So I always have this weird problem in my own head. Like, am I saying, look at me, I'm doing all this service. I'm doing it because I want people to go, no shit, excuse me, but I can go out and do service. I cursed on the other show this week too. I feel a very feeling very naughty this week apparently but like no kidding i can go out and i can just make an impact and do something and mick i love your brother i'll see you next next month later this month when i come down to dc but the idea is if you can do that if you can get out and, and if there's a, something in your community gang i mean allison you know i don't know if we need to talk about it today but even just you talk to me about some a, a gentleman you met in your community recently and I'll, you know it, it's kind of a, you know you told me on the side but um there are people gang out there each and every day making an impact in our communities who would love for you to show up and bring your talent, you know, treasure's great. You know, we know that time's certainly important, but um, maybe you got talent, maybe you know how to hammer a nail and somebody else doesn't show up, help out. You know, there's well, so much- and, and you know, Tommy, the thing too, is if, if I may, I think what's really important to share with people is, uh, you know, a lot of people will say to me that are not entrenched in this world like we are, you know, I wish I could give back. I don't want to just write a check. Uh, you know, I want to find something to do. And I always say, there's so many opportunities for you to do things. I, of course, listen, everybody needs the financial support. There's no two ways about it. But when you're actually there doing the work with the people, shoulder to shoulder, meeting the recipients of the mission of whichever organization it is, it touches you in a very different way than it does just to write a check. Um, you know, you spoke about the Imagine Awards earlier. Being in a room filled with people who has made who have made it their life's purpose to help this world, and they they come from so many different uh, various backgrounds in the nonprofit world. You would never feel better. I mean, I I can't imagine even leaving the Oscars makes you feel as good as you do leaving the Imagine Awards because you know the people are there to do the work to improve this world yeah all due and, respect if there is any due respect to hollywood um that ain't even the same thing <laughs> well know? you know it feels good to go to the oscars i, I, I wouldn't lie about I've that never been. i've never been i don't know maybe I, I don't know if i'd fit in even with my amazon tuxedo <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure something tells me you would be just fine hey, hey tommy d who are you wearing amazon <laughs> <laughs> that would be very cool and very unique that would but, be you know I think that people find, think that, um, you know, donating their time is, it, they're required to do so much of it. You can donate as much or as little time as you can. Yeah. Anything that you do is going to be of a benefit to that organization. Uh, you know, you could be oftentimes, and a big struggle for our nonprofit organizations is to find board members. Yeah. Uh, you know, board members have a very different definition today than they did 25 years ago when I started this. You know, back then it seemed like board members more wanted to be the name on the letterhead and they were people of influence. Boards have changed, they're working boards now. And that doesn't mean that you have to put in your blood, sweat and tears but identify what your talents are and how you can contribute those talents to being on a board. You know, whether you, if you're an accountant, they always need a treasurer. You know, if you are in public relations, they always need, I mean, marketing is huge for a nonprofit. If you have a PR person that's on your board, or if you are a PR person that could just donate some of that time, that is tremendous. And even if you're not in those types of careers, think about what it is that you could do that you could provide support and assistance with. We, uh, we happen to have at the Nonprofit Resource Hub, I mean, we have almost 250 amazing nonprofits in our roster. I will tell you that there's one in particular here on Long Island that's always looking for, non, uh, for volunteers. They're called Camp Good Morning. Um, all of our organizations are amazing and deserve volunteers. Yeah, you know, Camp, yep. yeah, and Camp Good Morning happens to resonate with me because I lost a parent at an early age and I think, gosh, that would be such, that would have been so amazing to have that service at that age. 
they're always looking for people to just come out for a weekend to hang out with the kids and be a sounding board for them. You do get a certain level of training, of course, uh, but you know, there's always something that you can do. So if you're thinking about it, you also need to think about what resonates with you, because if there is something, a mission that resonates with you, you're really going to, it's, you're going to feel good about the work that you're doing and you're going to feel connected to what you're doing. hundred percent. We do have to take a quick break, but I just want to, I'm looking on Facebook on my phone because our buddy Ken Serini was given an award last night and I'm trying to remember which award it is. Cause I'm going to meet him next week. Cause he's getting another award next week. But was it, uh, it's, oh, I think it was Vicky Schnapp's agency, uh, Vicky Schnapp, Schnapp's, um, Schnapp's media. Schnapp's media that gave Ken this award. I'm trying to look at it. I'll, I'll have it back. But the one last point I want to make real quick about that Oscars versus the Imagine Awards, man. Again, I joke about due respect to the Oscars, but look, these Imagine Awards, applicants, semifinalists, finalists, and winners are changing the freaking world, are changing the world. I don't know how much the people out in Hollywood are really changing the world. Now, I'm not here to beat them up. It's not my job. My job is to shine a light on the nonprofit sector. So with it, it it's Ken Serini's brainchild to have founded those Imagine Awards, where are such a special event. So being in that room, to your point, I was just in the one in New York City. People are crying because the world has changed because of the work these people are doing. So um, you're, th that's really next week's show. We're going to talk about the Imagine Awards. Oh, look at Kelly Serini must be paying attention. The A-list award. Thanks, Kelly, for the text. It's Kelly and Serini <laughs> from Serini and Associates. That's how this show works. I just put out, you know, my vibes to the universe and people send me the information. Also, people pay attention and listening and maybe it's just that too. All right. Well, I want to talk about that difference in boards that you talked about when we come back, Allison. I really want to dive into the piece also about managing business, which is these are businesses. You and I know that. These are not hat in hand charities. Hey, help us out. It's really a conversation of we are a business. 501c3 is a tax filing status, right? It, that's there. These are, you know, I have payroll, I have employees, I have benefits I have to pay, I have all these things, I have HR, finance. I'm a business as a nonprofit. So we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about really how the resource hub, as it is called, the nonprofit resource hub, provides that sort of information and webinars and training. We're way over on break. So we'll take a quick one. Dylan, take us to break. Allison and Tommy D, Philanthropy and Focus, right back. Are you a business owner? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you work with business owners? Hi, I'm Stephen Fry, your small and medium-sized business or SMB guy. And I'm the host of the new show, Always Friday. While I love to have fun on my show, we take those Friday feelings of freedom and clarity to discuss popular topics on the minds of SMBs today. Please join me and my various special guests on Friday at 11 a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your conscious consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Are you on edge? Hey, we live in challenging, edgy times, so let's lean in. I'm Sandra Bargeman, the host of The Edge of Every Day, which airs each Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. Tune in live with me and my friends and colleagues as we share stories and perspectives about pushing boundaries and exploring our rough edges. That's The Edge of Every Day on Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. That is a request, man. Just come through the static. Join me in the attic. Now, I got to say something because I realized after all these episodes, I keep inviting people to my attic. It's really only virtual. I 
please don't show up at the house. Please don't knock on the door. Like, please, it's really just for me, the attic. But you're welcome to show up virtually and, and paid attention to the show. I just didn't know if people actually understood that, Allison. Like, I was worried, especially with these trick-or-treaters this week everywhere. Who knew who was going to end up in the attic? You know what I mean? <laughs> All I was right. going to show up with coffee this morning. Well, listen, you show up with, that's a different thing. You show up with coffee. Yeah, you, I know that's the ticket in. You could probably work your way into the attic. It's like Willy Wonka's, you know, golden ticket. You know, okay. I got a golden ticket. I got a golden chance. I warned you, Allison, I'm feeling very singy today and it might, it might happen. All right. You shared something in the chat. I'll share it on Facebook. It is for our upcoming event, but let me get back. Let's get back on track. In 2021, Allison was recognized for her work and honored as a woman of distinction by Assemblywoman Melissa Miller. She's been married 19 years, has two great boys, and is a dog mom to Bear and Maisie. And also, you've fostered dogs over the years as well, which, you know, very close to some other project work. And again, I'm going out to Canine Companions I told you about. Um, really, again, give back involved in the community these are our people right these are the people we like to hang around with right yes so, so before you even respond all the jibber jabber i'm saying right now shout out to mr t on the jibber jabber but before i even talk to you about the next piece paul rubin you mentioned camp good morning paul's is watching on facebook right now so shout out uh -huh. to love you love the organization paul was so special is so special that a friend of mine uh lost her husband last year and her boys went out to, to camp good morning um and my dad and i thanks dad my dad and i always bring italian ices out to camp good morning out of camp aquatic from ralph's out in huntington my dad's shop and you know paul loves it he's so appreciative and i love you paul paul our friend uh son was doing um bar mitzvah and he was raising money for an organization called project purple which is a friend of ours dino varelli's organization over in connecticut and he had a lemonade stand. My wife helped his mom and, and this young man, Andrew, do the lemonade stand, the whole thing. And Paul made a point to get out here, you know, to see Andrew during this day where the money was being raised. And, and I, I was like, I almost, I'm going to probably cry now, but I was very emotional. And Paul goes, this is one of my guys. Of course I'm here, Tommy D. He wasn't there for Tommy D. I'm not saying that. He was there for Andrew. And these are the people we hang out with. I'm going to probably get mushy and cry. So Allison, I well, please, uh, Tommy, I think you make a really good point, though, also, is uh, it's really important to expose your kids to community service. Uh, you know, it's never too early. It's they could do something as simple as a lemonade stand. I think everybody has seen that on social media, that some kids start a lemonade stand and the next thing you know, they're raising thousands of dollars for an organization. Uh, it doesn't have to be thousands of dollars. What you're doing is you're exposing children. It doesn't matter if they're your own children, nieces or nephews, whatever the case may be. You're exposing them to the fact that they are part of the community and what they put into it is what they get out of it. If you do this at a young age, it just becomes part of the fabric of their lifestyle. The habit, it's, right? it's, yeah. it's a habit. That's what we do. It's just we who they become. Um, we're very lucky in my particular school district here in Long Beach where our middle school eighth graders start to do a community project throughout their eighth grade uh, course of time where they start to talk about how they're going to contribute towards a community project. Uh, lucky for my own kids, I've been doing it with them for a long time. They know what it's like to want to support uh, for them. Oftentimes it's for other kids. Uh, so it really depends. And then again, you're also allowing those kids to identify what's important to them and then giving them the opportunity to raise money for them or raise awareness. And then really the cherry on the top of the Sunday is getting to meet those people that they've helped to benefit. Oh yeah. 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 It's, uh, shout out to little flower. I'm, I'm really shouting out a lot of, a lot of people today, but, but you know, my friend Nairikia White, who was with Little Flower, as I know her from Girls Inc. of Long Island, and uh, now she's with Girl Scouts of Suffolk County. Hey, Tammy and everybody out there, Girl Scouts. Um, you know, Nairikia had called me up uh, last summer, not this past summer, the summer before, and she's like, I see you spending time uh, with this organization, the Allied Foundation, Heather Edwards. Um, I think some of the folks in our community could benefit from the diaper program that they have. Could you make the connection? Long short, I make the connection. I end up really digging what Little Flower was doing. So I did a couple of days of service out there. And then this is going back to that thing about talent, not to say that I'm so talented, because that's not what I mean, but whatever it is you might be good at, 
they asked me to be their MC at their event, which mm-hmm. I did today, which was a virtual. And I, and I uh, met Dr. Sandra Lindsay, who is uh, a director of nursing at uh, in the Northwell system, but she's also the first person to get the COVID vaccine. So she's become a bit of a celebrity, uh, at least in this country and down the White House a bunch of times. And I actually was asked to play golf with Dr. Sandra Lindsay. And it was, uh, so it was two people who'd never played golf and two people who could barely play golf. And that was my buddy, Brendan Levy and I. Good thing he's a good singer. He did the song for the show that, that you heard a couple minutes ago. But it's about the relationships, about the connections, it's about the friendships that we can develop through these opportunities. And much of that, Allison, I think you'd agree, is about choice. Where do we want to go? Who do we want to spend our time? Mm-hmm. With? You know, I mean, I, my partners and I at the Vanguard, I was going to say Vanguard Insurance Agency, but we just rebranded Vanguard Benefits. And we made a decision a bunch of years ago, about seven years ago, that we wanted to really work with nonprofit organizations. We could have said hedge funds, could have said private equity, you know, we could have said anything, but we decided it was nonprofit. And the reason we said that is because of everything we're talking about. And you said something earlier about those of us who are in this work all the time. I don't work for a nonprofit. I sit on a handful of boards, sit on some committees, pretty involved. Um, but I really consider this our sector. And Ken tells us all the time, you know, the sector, the sector, the nonprofit sector. Um, I want to talk about the NRH and from a resource perspective, what we're providing as an organization. You talked about we're, we're they're managing businesses, these leaders. I want to talk about that. What does that look like from a perspective of what have you found? And I know one of the things we have the program there is is group therapy for the executive directors. Is there a certain thing, again, without revealing anybody's confidence or or betraying anybody's confidence, are there certain topics that stand out for leaders that are pretty consistent that they need? And and from a business management perspective, talk a bit about what we can do with the NRH. Mm -hmm. So the Nonprofit Resource Hub, which I'm always appreciative of your mentioning us on your podcast, thank you. Uh, We are an association that bridges the for-profit community to help support the nonprofit community. We provide a ton of resources, a ton of education and services to the nonprofit uh, sector, whether you be here in New York or out in California. Uh, We are concentrated most here in New York, But the people we have, um, we're kind of split in terms of membership. We have our associate members. Those are the people that provide services and goods to the nonprofit community. And then we have our nonprofit partners. Those are obviously our nonprofit organizations. Uh, The way that this was set up when you first started it was to really be considerate of those that wanted to join, be part of it, and how could we create this resource center to be trusted, well-respected, to support the nonprofit organizations in the best possible way that we can. And um, over the course of what really is a short period of time, and if you remember two years of it was COVID, uh, we have built something that is growing organically and more importantly, authentically. Uh, so we, what we do is we have those uh, associate members, those that provide goods and services to the nonprofit community, We are incredibly particular about who is permitted in to be that representing member. And we are so particular because we want to make sure if we were to ever recommend somebody to a nonprofit, they know that they're going to somebody who is trusted. I've been an executive director for many different nonprofit organizations, and oftentimes you have an extremely limited budget. And if you hire somebody on that limited budget, you're really, and then you don't know who they are, you're crossing your fingers, hoping that they are going to deliver. Uh, We know that the people who are associate members with the nonprofit resource hub are going to deliver and support and more than likely go above and beyond. I know how we know because I'm involved in those conversations, but how do we know? Talk to me about that. that. They go through, uh, our applicants go through a tremendous vetting service. You know, first they, they fill out a very lengthy application and then there are several interviews. Then it goes up to our board of directors. Our board of directors reviews the application. Sometimes we go back more often than not. We do go back to the applicant with questions and then the board eventually votes on, you know, whether or not this person is approved. Uh, For the nonprofit organizations, it was very important when this organization was formed that we are sensitive to all those budgets. Any nonprofit can join the Nonprofit Resource Hub free of charge. 
I would say 99% of what we offer in terms of education, webinars, anything to that effect is free to our nonprofit organizations, with the exception of this particular conference that we're doing in the city next uh, in the next two weeks, which we'll talk about uh, momentarily. Our associate members are expected to provide their own level of community service to our nonprofits, whether it be through educating through a webinar, whether it be through sitting on um, and ask the expert where our nonprofits have a day, a couple, an hour really, to call in one day a week and talk to the experts about whatever questions it is they may have pertaining to that topic. So we've really tried to listen to our nonprofit member uh, partners, ask them about what it is that they need. And when you ask me about our executive director, and I use the term very loosely because it is not a typical group therapy session. Uh, it's a facilitated discussion with executive directors in a safe space that they can talk about their challenges. Every single time we do one, it's different, mm -hmm. uh, which is great because we get to learn more about what the nonprofit sector's needs are. They get to really exchange resources, which is really helpful for them. And they also know that they're not isolated. Being an executive director can be an incredibly isolating experience. You are often doing the job of many. I used to say an ED is a secretary to a CEO. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of feel siloed and you don't have that opportunity always to connect with other executive directors. Perhaps if you go to a conference, you get to sit with somebody, but to have a dedicated hour, hour and a half to speak with other people who are in the same boat, your colleagues, to exchange those resources, ideas, support, it has been hugely beneficial. What we have found from it, I would say if you're talking about um, trends that have kind of floated up, you know, every nonprofit always focuses on fundraising and we always know that is a challenge. But aside from that, I would say our nonprofits really want to understand board development. They want to understand how it is that their boards are working now. We talked about how boards have changed over the past 25 years. Very important to them. How do they help onboard their board members properly? So the board member is really educated and aware of what it is that's expected of them. So, you know, there are a couple of different, I would say, uh, topics that do float up every once in a while. Uh, and it really depends on the group that's there. We don't always have the same people on the sessions. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. I, I pulled up the actual event right for the event. I'll share it as we go to Facebook. So if you are on, if you're watching us on Facebook, you'll get to see this uh, mentions the, uh, the agenda for the day on um, the 15th, correct? I'm right. Yes, um, November 15th. And we have an amazing lineup of speakers. I really encourage everybody to take a look. We'll show you that. I shared it on Facebook. I'll share it when we go to break. Uh, when we come back, let's dive in a little bit more around. First of all, you know, mastermind, that term, it's got thrown around so many, so much over the years and it's become, I don't know, is it cliche? I don't know, it's become played out, I guess, for, for, for my vernacular, what I would say. Um, and I, but I still believe in the concept. So, um, so I'll say, there must be some sort of mastermind esque appeal to that those group therapy sessions, right? It's a thing where they can really look towards each other. And I'm sure there's a meeting after the meeting. They make friends, they make relationships, these EDs, and then they move on and they probably go elsewhere together and have these conversations more in depth because that's what we do. We're human beings and it's about developing the relationship. So um, all right, let's take a quick break. I'll share, like I said, when we come back, maybe we go a little bit more into board development, certainly as it relates to the conference and what some of those topics might be. How's that sound? Sure. Great. Thank you. I'll be right back. Are you passionate about the conversation around racism? Hi, I'm Reverend Dr. TLC, host of the Dismantle Racism Show, which airs every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc. Join me and my amazing guests as we discuss ways to uncover, dismantle, and eradicate racism. That's Thursdays at 11 o'clock a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a small business trying to navigate the COVID-19 related employment laws? Hello, I'm Eric Sauber, employment law business law attorney and host of the new radio show, Employment Law Today. On my show, we'll have guests to discuss the common employment law challenges 
business owners are facing during these trying times. Tune in on Tuesday evenings from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. Hey, everybody, it's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy and Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. Welcome back to the show. Welcome to the focus. Welcome to the future. Uh, listen, Allison, I'm sharing while we're on Facebook, I'm sharing just continuing dragging down the page so everybody could see, but the event is being held at the Relay Graduate School of Education on November 15th. Uh, it's a half day board training conference on a number of different topics. Allison LaFalita, the executive director of the Nonprofit Resource Hub is here with me. So Allison, let's, uh, let's dive into kind of board needs, the difference. Why don't we set up the stage a little bit about what we just talked about, you know, in the first segment there, our, the evolution of board members and and the expectation of from board members, you know, not just, well, that person is wealthy. Let's stick them on the board so they can give us a big check, right? Mm -hmm. That's, it's, maybe that's the way things were, and maybe that is the way things are in certain segments, but many organizations, especially the ones I sit on the board, they, they go, this is a working board. Just let you know, this is a working board. What does that even mean? So I think the, the big misconception is, you know, every board is consistently the same across, across the board, which is not true. Every board is unique to the organization it serves. However, there are certain things that have changed in terms of expectations for our boards in the nonprofit sector. Uh, you know, again, these are businesses that are being run. And you need to have, you know, if you had a board of directors for a for-profit organization, there would be a very specific list of expectations. It should be the same for a nonprofit organization. Uh, it wouldn't be fair, in my opinion, to bring somebody onto your board of directors and not let them know what's expected of them. People, uh, you know, oftentimes somebody joins a board because they already have a friend or a colleague on the board that says, hey, we need somebody. Can you come in? And they kind of go in not knowing what's expected and that never works for anybody and that's uh, which, that happens though i mean I, I get all the it. time i've certainly experienced it over the last five six years like hey you like us we like you why don't you join the board and you know absolutely somebody who might not be thinking I, i'll remember a board i was invited on and uh one of our friends um uh, david goldstein over at Sir Tillman Ballin, one of the, uh, him and his firm, one of the original founders with us, or with our team at Vanguard, at, um, founding the nonprofit resource hub. Um, David had mentioned to me many, many years ago, and he says it often that, you know, board members have liability and risk and, and things like that. And, you know, having learned this stuff over the years, and he's the attorney, I'm not, but having learned this stuff, uh, I remember being invited to join a board of a small organization. I'm still a member of this organ, the board of this organization. And I said, I had reached out to the treasurer and I said, I know this is a small organization, but like, can I see the financials? Like, I want to understand what this is about. You're asking me to join this board. I have risk and liability. I need to know. I need to understand. And I mean, that's a, that's certainly a question you, you should be asking, um, but there's a lot of questions you need to ask as a potential board member. And it's not just, hey, what's the give get? You know, how much do I have to, you know, donate or find? Uh, but really, what do you want? What do you expect? And are we even aligned? Like, some people come to me and say, oh, we'd love to have you on our board. I go, well, let's let's flirt a little bit. Like, let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's you know. Yeah, let's, and, I, and I think that's a really important eight. point that you bring up. Right. Because if the if it's not if it doesn't resonate with your heart, 
it's really hard to put the work into it. And it's not for everybody. Like you don't date everybody. You know, you date whoever it is that you connect with. It's the same thing when you join a board. But I always say, you know, it is up to those that are already in existence, whether it be a board member, the executive director, director, whoever it is that's approaching somebody, that you're very clear on what your messaging is when you're inviting somebody to join, that they understand what the mission is, that it means something to them, that you're asking them, you know, this is your skill set. We would, we really need somebody with your skill set to serve. This is, this is kind of what we're expecting from you. A lot of people will say to me off the bat, how many hours are expected? And it runs the gamut depending on what the board is that I'm working with. Sometimes Maybe it's three hours a month. Sometimes it's 35 hours a week. It really depends. But you got to know, you got to know going in like any other relationship yes. as far as communication goes. And I'm not going to say like I, I'm aces when it comes to communication, but I just think that we need to hold on. What do you expect from me? Can I do that? What do I expect from you? You know, there's some boards where um, I think people join boards. I, I remember, so I just recently, actually it's June that I finished my work with the Institute for Nonprofit Practice and a certificate program. And I made some great friends. Some of those I've introduced to you, Allison. And, um, you know, I just sort of learned about the different things that go on within the boards and and really the different relationships. And And I think it's critical to have that dialogue up front is where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and Tom, you also made me think too, that in that dialogue or even in identifying potential board members, one, one uh, actual topic that does kind of keep coming to the surface with our executive director meetings is our, our executive directors are desperate and really want to diversify their boards. They want to do it in an authentic way they want to do it in a, in a way in which they're engaging people from all different walks of life. Listen, it's not an easy formula, right? Because now you're looking for people from various backgrounds, with various skills, different walks of life. You know, it's a, it's a tall order to fill. Mm -hmm. And I would never say that that's something easy to do. There, But we're working through formulas. And this is something that we're going to talk about at the conference on the 15th. That is one of our breakout uh, panels is talking about diversifying your boards and how important it is. It seems like this is um, this has now become top of the list priority in terms of board development. It would be crazy for anybody to not want to have different walks of life, different people with different experiences, different organizations to be representing their board. It does nothing but encourage thought, conversation, you're getting the best from everybody that they're really great at if you set up your expectations appropriately. Does it always work? No. I mean, you know, that's why I come in a lot of times is to help an organization get through those processes, help them through that. Um, you know, but again, this is something that's going to be addressed at the conference on the 15th. Yep. Um, and I would say if that's something that's really important to you, it does not matter if you are a nonprofit executive or if you're a board member. Or if you're a you, board chair, right? Yeah, you should really be thinking about this. Right, and often it falls on on the board chair, you know, to to strengthen their board, right? To bring on the quote unquote right people, right? You know that that fill the need that the board specifically has. But to your point earlier, you know, it, it's it's also about bringing people to the board with diverse backgrounds, but also just diverse thoughts. You know, yep. you know, like just because all that is like all that lived experience, you know, and it it creates conversation that doesn't happen. And it, you know, if everybody comes from a similar background, the ideas might be pretty, pretty much. They become similar. stagnant. It's, yeah, they become know, a little stagnant. How does an organization grow without kind of that shot in the arm from somebody coming from a different direction? So some of the the topics. So there's two different tracks. Um, we have. Let me just kind of read you a little bit before uh i can't believe we, we go to breaks more than we do show sometimes on this program it drives me bananas avra rice president and ceo of new york urban league will be our keynote speaker that morning uh the event goes from 9 a.m we start with continental breakfast and some networking and uh, goes through two o'clock the first panel is uh why you are not securing your donor dollars so we have um matt thompson 
um, who will be the moderator on that group. Should we go through each one like this? What do you think? Well, I think if you're going to break, you may, may not have time. No, I know. So I'll do it really fast. So okay. Mary Barnby from the American Red Cross, Darren Port from Powered by Professionals, and Ria Wong will be on that panel. My business partner, Ed Probst from Vanguard Benefits with David Goldstein, Alvarez Simonette, chairman of the board of the South Bronx Community Charter High School, and Ken Serini will be doing a topic of strengthening and protecting your board. You still think you're going into TV. I like this. You, you're like telling me, Tommy, you got to go to break. <laughs> I, I just, I just picked that up. Going, <laughs> That's so, a producer in me. Time I to go to break. It. I love it. I, listen, I need all the help I can get. Uh, pandemic impact, real estate, HR, and financing for established organizations, nonprofits. That's Stephen Powers from Open Impact Real Estate. On that commit, on that uh, panel will be Jim Crumholtz of Real HR Solutions, and another friend of ours, Andrea Cantor from, uh, who's managing director over at Webster Bank. Webster Bank making a big commitment to the New York City Imagine Awards. Webster, we love you. We appreciate you. Uh, and then the, the panel on strategic planning and board development will be Michael Fleischer from Sterling Risk. My buddy, my pal, Christine Deska, co uh, co founder and president of uh, nonprofit sector strategies, but she and I run the roundtables together. Uh, Amma Karakari Yawson from Millstales, Milestales organization, talking about diversity. That's really going to be a big topic as we talked about. And Ellie Reeder from Youth Inc. And then the final panel we'll talk about that you're moderating. We will take a break, producer, and we will come back and okay. then talk about your panel. We'll be right back. Tommy D, Philanthropy and Focus, Allison, Nonprofit Resource Hub. We're going to break. Hey, everybody. It's Tommy D, the Nonprofit Sector Connector, coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy and Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. In a post-COVID world, you may have many unanswered questions regarding your health. Are you looking to live a healthier lifestyle? Do you have a desire to learn more about mental health and enhance your quality of life? Or do you just want to participate in self-understanding and awareness? I'm Frank R. Harrison, host of Frank About Health, and each Thursday, I will tackle these questions and work to enlighten you. Tune in every Thursday at 5 p.m. on talkradio.nyc, and I will be Frank About Health to advocate for all of us. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. We're back, and today, as I said up front, it's a special day because Allison Lavalita, my buddy and friend, the executive director of the Nonprofit Resource Hub, or as we say, NRH is here. I'm sharing on Facebook just the final uh, pieces of that event right to check out, but you can also go to nonprofitresourcehub.org to find out more about the organization, or if you are a nonprofit leader and you want to become part of this organization, and you want to connect with Allison, how do they do that, Allison? Is there an email address, maybe? Uh, I would say if you do, go to nonprofitresourcehub.org. You are always welcome to email info at nonprofitresourcehub.org. The application for a nonprofit is very simple, very quick. And if you become a member, you do get a member rate on tickets to the conference on the 15th. So it's free to be a member of the organization. Yes. I do. By becoming a member, I get a discount on the actual tickets. Yes. And just so you know, also, Tommy, we were really cognizant about uh, trying to include as many nonprofits 
in our conference. So we kept the ticket price very low. Uh, it's super competitive compared to some of the other nonprofit conferences going on in the city. Our tickets run from 80 to to $100, depending on whether or not you're a member. Perfect. All right. So again, you know, listen, folks, it's all about getting better. It's about sharpening the saw. It's about learning your trade. It's about connecting with people around you who have walked in your shoes, who have done some of the work you're doing. And then it's about collaborating. I like that word mastermind. You know, the Tommy D from two segments ago said it's an old school word, but I like that word. It's really about masterminding. It's about bringing people together and learning from each other and, and supporting each other because what are we doing here? We're creating community. We're a bunch of people. We're, we're a race of people and that we should be supporting each other. And until the world has no ills and no needs, there will be a nonprofit sector. And my friend Ken Serini says, can you imagine a world without nonprofits? Well, we'd have to have a lot of problems solved because that's what the sector does, solves problems and, and creates the, uh, uh, the opportunities to fix the things that are broken and serve those who need to be served. So Allison, what else can, can folks find out about NRH and what else do you want to share as an executive director of this organization and your experience uh, in others? I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's really important if you are an organization that provides services and support to a nonprofit and you offer something really unique to this sector that you look into what we're doing, uh, you know, and consider joining. So a business, part, we're speaking to business. Yes. And part of the, one of the really great aspects of being an, an associate member is that you are the only member that represents your category. So, uh, you know, this is the way that we see it is that we are building an external team. Mm. So we may not all be under one roof together, but this, I, and I've run many, many associations for a long time. This is an incredibly supportive, uh, collaborative group of people. I have, I hear it even when we're not in our meetings, how you're working together. And that's really important. Uh, if you're a nonprofit, I would encourage you to take a look and join. It's like, to me, it's a no brainer. You're not paying anything and you're getting tons in return for your, uh, for your application. And I also think it's really important as a board member, somebody who's serving on a board, this is not your everyday life. And I understand that. And we get that. But there are certain things that you really need to know because you may be left holding the bag <laughs> if anything should ever happen. Really important for you to know about that. I certainly encourage everybody to try to make it out to our conference. That said, our tickets are very limited. So do not sit on your hands and wait. If you really want to go, buy your ticket today. Uh, Tommy has shared the Eventbrite link. And you know if there's anything that you as a nonprofit, either you're a professional, executive, somebody who's volunteering, if there's something that we're not offering, let us know right and we will be happy to do it. Our whole conference was born from an idea that a member had to say, you know, wouldn't it be really great if we could just do a conference in half a day and just vet our speakers? It, you know, it's not that the speaker pays to participate, it's that we select the speakers, we talk about where they're coming from, their experience. Uh, we really worked very hard to make sure we were offering our audience people with incredibly varied backgrounds, very different skill levels, uh, just personal experiences too. So our audiences could learn, they can be inspired, they can grow their own networks while they're in, while they're there. Because like you said, it's what we call, we call it at NRH is building our community. No doubt. Yep. No doubt about community building. I mean, that's so critical. And and I, I will tell you, and I've said it on this show before, and it's probably no surprise to people who know me, but the biggest asset I got out of doing the work with the Institute for Nonprofit Practice was the people I met, was the relationships. I mean, it was a, you know, there was probably four or five people that you and I spoke to personally about, hey, listen, here's this event that we have coming up. We really want to be uh, bringing best of breed in all aspects. And, you know, shout out to my friends, uh, Jamila Bergen, Mahin Kaleem, um, Michael Pardis, um, Kofo, who's been on the show. All Most of these people have been on this program with me and, and they're friends. And I know that certainly, gang, you can come to me if you need anything. But the fact that I was able to reach out to people who have other communities that are, you know, it's like those circles. It's the ripple effect. You know, Alice and I talk about it a lot. You know, I, I always say, you know, I feel like I'm walking through life with there's a big pond that I'm just winging rocks into the pond and the ripple effect and how long will those ripples go my answer is infinite because one ripple goes into the next ripple goes into the next ripple and we just keep moving on out so let's i want to hit the last 
we're going to close out the event with your panel from thriving strike that from si surviving come on tommy to thriving the post-pandemic landscape through the eyes of today's nonprofit leaders that's your panel discussion yes. where you're going to get to speak with three leaders alexander roke president and executive director of the, of the alley forney center Janice Weinman, Executive Director of Education Through Music, and Eileen Newman, Executive Director of Hostis, Hostos. So talk to me about what that session is going to look like. So that's a, this is our closing session, and we thought it was really important for our audience to hear from their peers and their colleagues. Our three panelists come from uh, really very different organizations. Uh, they also have various uh, backgrounds and experience in the nonprofit world before they arrived where they are today. But you know, everything has changed. And I think, you know, we can we can just talk about the pandemic all day long, but now it's, how did things change for you? How do you, what did you take from it that you think, hey, this really worked for us and we're gonna keep doing this? What challenges are you faced with now? And I think when other organization leaders in an audience hear from their peers, Oftentimes they are inspired by something, they hear about a resource that maybe they never would have heard about, and they get to find out, oh, you know, we're not the only people going through this, but how do you work together? I will stress before we close, collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. Do not worry about anybody tapping into your well of funding. Funders want to see organizations collaborate. They want to see you working together it will be to your benefit in the end if you do. And not to mention, you're casting a wider net of the people you're going to help. 100%. And we got to stop, in my opinion, fighting over the same dollars or this mindset that we're fighting over the same dollars. Let's have, you know, I think it's Professor Duckworth. Let's have a growth mindset and not this stale, like, I, let's think in terms of collaborate, 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 get bigger and have this growth mindset. I want to give a shout out to the team over there at the Nonprofit Resource Hub. I'm looking at all your faces on my screen right now. My friend, the executive director, who's here with me, Allison LaPerlita, Kelly Ansarini, my buddy, my pal, Kelly, I dig working with you and all the stuff you do from a marketing perspective for Serini, for um, the Imagine Awards, New York City and Long Island, and then obviously what we do together here with the Nonprofit Resource Hub. Christina Leno Tortoris, and then Trish Brett, who takes care of a lot of the bookkeeping through our relationship with the hub. So thank you all for that. Thank you to the founders of the, of the hub. Um, thank you, Allison, for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Welcome. Thank you, Mick Collins, for checking in. Paul Rubin from Camp Good Morning. Thank you for watching us on the Facebook. And thank you for what you do, making it special for those children who have lost a sibling or a parent. And uh, listen, can you imagine a world without nonprofits. Well, I certainly can't because I live in this world. So next week on the show, Ken Serini and I will be talking about the Imagine Awards. Allison, thanks again. All right. Thank Everybody, you. This was great. Appreciate you. Everybody check in. Go to nonprofitresourcehub.org.org or um, you can always uh, send me an email, Tommy D at philanthropyandfocus.com. P-H-O-C-U-S is focus if you don't know that by now. And I'll answer any questions about the hub. Allison, make it a great day. Everybody make it a great day. Have a great weekend. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>